Everyone knows Wingstop brings the flavor. Lemon pepper, OG hop, mango habanero, just to name a few. It's kind of our thing. That's why we created the Bringing It Boneless Bundle. 25 boneless wings, three flavors, and three dips. All for just $16.99. So next time your crew gets the craving, everyone can have their favorites. Hop on Wingstop.com and order yours today. Prices and participation may vary. See local restaurant for details. <sighs> Can't stop. Wingstop. So tell me, tell me why we're doing Dark Side War tonight, Mark. Justice League comes out uh, as I as I like to refer to it. Justice League as as directed by Zack Snyder, then thrown in the garbage and reshot by Josh Whedon, uh, <laughs> <laughs> comes out this Friday. Uh, or as or if, when you by the time you're if you're listening to this live, it comes out this Friday. If you're listening to this uh, when it airs on the regular Rattles and Broadcasting schedule, uh, it will have just come out. So to synergize with the release of Justice League, we are looking at a Justice League arc. Uh, authored by Jeff Johns called Dark Side War that took place over uh, Justice League issues. I want to say like 40 through 50. Yeah, something you're right. along those lines. Yeah, you're right. I don't know if you noticed this, Ronnie, but did you see what the final issue of this Justice League run was? <laughs> Number 51? 52! Oh, 52, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, sorry, I tried to block that from my head. <laughs> funny funny thing, uh, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, right. I went to the North Carolina Comic Con, Bull City, which is in Durham, North Carolina, this weekend, and a gentleman there, um, well, two gentlemen that were running this booth, I, I'm not sure what their, their shop was called or if they had a physical shop, brought all these books, you know, most of them were, were or face value or like two bucks an issue. Um, it was a three day con, so it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. About two o'clock, three o'clock Saturday, the guy said, I don't want to take any of this home. <laughs> Everything is two for a dollar. Nice. So I got the majority of the Dark Side Wars, including most of the one shots, and I paid like six bucks for them. Wow. So if that, and um, I can't remember how much or how many I had. Yeah, no, it was like four or five bucks because I got like all but number. Yeah, well, no, yeah, it was more like six bucks because I got like 12, 12 issues um, of, of the Dark Side War. And um, it was, you know, it, it was pretty cool. Um and you know, I got all of you know the whole Howard the Duck run and stuff like that. I still read it <laughs> digitally because I was missing a few issues. And uh, reading the first issue, I was like, "Yeah, no, I'm not. I, I can't. I can't just. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to just guess what happened." On no, the, you are not. If there are no context sure. clues with this book. It's, I must read it all. You are going. Yeah, you are going to possibly be missing something big. Uh, so yeah, this is just like Mark said, 10 issues. Uh, this is the re revamp of the justice league, the new 52 justice league as it were. So what we're going to do tonight, just to give my guests a heads up and give our listeners a heads up. I really seriously probably have a five sentence recap of these 10 issues. So yeah, it is going to be a summary. My friends, there is a lot and I mean a lot that happens in this book, and I'm not going to take two hours and sit here and go issue by issue, even two issues at a time, to kind of decompress what happens, because there is a ton. Uh, but I want to quickly summarize, I've got a few questions. These guys might have some talking points to discuss, but uh, Mark covered most of the, the creative team here. Jeff Johns, uh, the, the artwork looked to be, well, I can tell you it was... Uh, it was pretty, some of the issues were pretty nice. If I remember correctly, there was maybe one issue that kind of stood out from the rest. I was like, well, that looks a little bit different. Uh, I, I'm looking at the wiki right here off of Google right now. Uh, two issues that looked really different from me. Now, were you counting the, the special? Cause I think I threw the special in there, the dark side. <laughs> more special. That, I think so. Okay. Yeah. That looked, that looked really different compared to the rest. Mark, does the trades that you have just have the 10 issues itself or does does it throw any uh, one shots or anything in there? Okay, so Justice League Dark Side War Part One hardcover collects 
Justice League covers. forty, Justice League forty through forty four, and DC sneak peek Justice League number one, Justice League Dark Side War Part Two, Volume Eight collects Justice League 45 through 50 and Justice League Dark Side War special number one. Okay. All right. So that's the one we're talking about, Ronnie, that looks a little yeah, different little, from the rest. Little, yeah, inky. Yeah. Does it have a listing there, Mark, of who the artists were just by chance on the back or anywhere that you can see? Um, aided by acclaimed illustrators Jason Fabic and Francis Manipool. Manip- okay. All right. Okay. Well, there's your creative team, folks. Jeff John uh in there uh it's a dc staple uh we've we just had our brian michael bendis discussion yeah and because he, jeff jeff johns has kind of moved up in the ranks to where he's uh, more attached to the tv and movie universe a lot of people think that bendis might kind of step in where jeff johns left off he's dc's bendis yes they yeah, yeah. yeah very good uh so all right well let me go ahead i'm going to give my summary here Anything else you guys want to talk about before I give the summary? No. All right, here we go. All right, so what happens when the Anti-Monitor decides to wage a war against Darkseid on Earth? One of two things. You either get the heck out of Dodge or hope the Justice League can do something. In this 10-issue series that takes place between Justice League issues 40 through 50, we are shown just what happens when two gods tussle on our home planet. We also learn of the origin of the Anti-Monitor and his ties to the Anti-Life Equation. Things come to a head when Darkseid's daughter, Grail, resulting from a union with an Amazon named Mar- Marina? Marina? Marina. I'm going to go with Marina. Is able to enact a course of events enlisting the aid of the Anti-Monitor that leads to the death and destruction of her father, Darkseid. Things get rather strange when members of the Justice League become powerful gods. Characters such as Scott Free, Miracle Man, Steppenwolf, the Black Racer, and the alternate universe crime syndicate all come together to give us an event like no other with many twists and reveals, the conclusions of which may be the first steps towards rebirth. So there it is. Now that is... I yeah, you want to talk about a summary? Mm. I mean, my goodness, Ronnie Adams. I mean, how much did I leave out? Uh, you quite can probably, a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. Quite a bit. I mean, there are. This thing starts off. Uh, well, it it starts off kind of crazy. There's characters. <laughs> I'm not a DC guy. I'm not a DC guy. So there's characters that I am not. You know the. The, the, the expert on in any way, shape, or form. Mark, let's let's go ahead and let me ask you first. Uh, I mean, h- how'd you feel opening this up and, and starting starting with it? You know, like I don't. <laughs> it's always gonna be good when Mark opens up with you know. <laughs> I it's it's one of those deals where because I I don't I'm not a Justice League reader and I'm trying to when whenever we have these synergistic specific episodes I'm really I'm trying to find a story that has a be- a distinct beginning middle end you know in in doing my research to try to find something that I thought would be a a good uh, accompaniment to the Justice League movie I kept seeing hey you know the five stars for the Justice League war And I was hoping I would be able to just pick it up, jump right in, and have some fucking clue what was happening. (laughs) You failed, sir. (laughs) Oh, man. I apparently need to go back to Golden Age Justice League to have some (laughs) semblance of sense in any of these books. Uh, I mean, just real quick, before I forget to ask, what percentage of what happens in this book do you think you're going to see on the screen, on the big screen? Zero percent. Steppenwolf appears in both. That's the percentage. (laughs) There you go. Both have parademons. Ah, yep, yep. I can see that. I can see that. Let let me add this to my, my thoughts on jumping into this. I don't know when DC decided everything had to be um outrageously cosmic and over the top and epic but it feels like every time we delve into anything in the dc universe that isn't Hanna barbera yeah it it has to be the universe is on the verge of collapsing and every universe ever in the existence of time itself will follow they had 17 resets and that was just in 2015 one of the guys in this book is a dude who's got ninja skills and a belt how the what the fuck man (laughs) <laughs> what um they actually i think it's in the first issue they're they're talking about the resets the reboots uh i think they 
clearly allude to Crisis on Infinite Earths. I know that's yeah. alluded to. They allude to Flashpoint. Uh, yep. that, that was obviously what set off the new 52. Cause I think this is Metron who's going through Metron on the, on the Mobius chair, uh, going through and talking about the multiverse, I guess you would say. And so, yeah, when dark side war happened, it's clearly an quote unquote event. So, uh, you're going to have I that the time. I haven't wanted to throw a book in a while. <laughs> the last time I did was infinite crisis where I, had to, there was a point in reading that where I just wanted to throw it across the room, but I would have hit law enforcement if I had, cause I was <laughs> reading it in the jail. <laughs> Mark, do you know, you want to know what, you know, the last time I wanted to throw a book was, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> probably something Mark suggested. Was it wacky Raceland? It was wacky Raceland. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow so okay so mark you're 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 stepping into this you, you kind of do you know did you know who the anti-monitor was this. no but it clearly the anti-monitor was the the big bad and crisis of infinite earth okay okay that's right ronnie how about you man i mean you're a little bit more familiar with dc you <laughs> open this up what what how you feeling Okay, <clears throat> I view the new gods. Uh, apoc- you know, I, I like Apocalypse as a as a villain, just as Apocalypse. But I view the new gods as I do Marvel Cosmic. I don't know much about it. Mm-hmm. You know, this book, this book is the equivalent to Dawn of Justice. <laughs> it's the, okay. Um, there are so many things happening at one time. It could have been good, but it's like they took all the ideas and said, these are all great. Let's throw them against the wall and see if they stick. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing stuck for me. It, it's it's the right it's the the writing style could be like the equivalent to say ten people at a boardroom table all talking at once. Yes. <laughs> or sixteen monkeys on caffeine <laughs> all typing at once. <laughs> Well, as uh, for myself, I mean, I found that I clearly gravitate toward these events a lot of times, especially if it's traversing the multiverse in some way. I'm a fan of stuff like that. I was kind of hooked. I knew a little bit about the history. I I uh, read Crisis. I think it was it was a few years back, so that was kind of still fresh on my mind. So I was excited to see what they were going to do. But my goodness, you guys are right. I mean, they threw a ton of stuff at you. I mean, there were some main characters. Obviously, we got the Justice League. One of uh, the more prominent characters that seemed to be somebody that kind of stayed in the shadows before, but it's probably right for this book is Mr. Miracle, Mr. Miracle tying the, the worlds of apocalypse. And I don't think new Genesis was mentioned here. Well, yeah, I think it was in like a couple panels, but yeah. mainly we, we got to worry about apocalypse. And of, of course, dark, the ruler of apocalypse, dark side. Yeah. I mean, you got his origin. Um, it couldn't be any simpler part of a, a, a armistice or truce between new genesis and apocalypse they exchanged sons and he got the fucking shaft (laughs) Uh, (laughs) you know okay got it okay uh ronnie mr miracle i've heard of him before but i always thought he was kind of a okay i always got like mr miracle and mr terrific and miracle man mixed up you know what's funny is i typed in i was reading my summary here i put scott free miracle man I yeah. just realized I did that. So, yeah. I'm, but M- Miracle Man, um, I always knew him as an escape artist. Mr. Miracle. Which he is. Or, yeah, Mr. Miracle. I got your back. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and and I thought that's kind of like, I thought he was like the po- like poor man's Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I found out later that he's he's a new god. And, you know, he's got all these weird powers. Plus, he is an escape artist. Um, you know, he's super strength, uh, agelessness, and all this other stuff. Because everybody, if you don't know what kind of powers to give somebody, give them super strength. Strength. And if you do know what powers to give him, give him super strength anyway. I feel feel like that's what you know is a staple in comic books. It, so he's got you know. So it, it was really interesting to to see what they were going to do with him. Mark's right; they did a really good job of of giving his origin and and really bringing him for, to the forefront. Because as I said, I always thought he was kind of like a, a C C list character. Yeah. Because I didn't read DC though. 
<laughs> I hear you. Miracle Man, by the way, was a fictional superhero appearing in comics published by Marvel Comics. But he went by Marvel Man, and he was created actually in 1954 by writer-artist hmm. Mick Anglo. So at some point, Alan Moore did get his hands. He did get his hands on Mar- uh, Marvel Man, turned into Miracle Man, and it was published through Eclipse Comics. So anyway, sidebar. Uh, okay, you got a favorite part of the book my favorite part of this book is batman taking the mo uh yes. the, uh, mobius chair absolutely mm. that is honestly the only part of the book i understood <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no it was I, there was no better character to become the god of knowledge than batman and my absolute favorite part and it, it was like it was favorite to the point of distracting because now all i want to do is see if he pursues this at all is when he asks is, and i do love this this is so true to the character this this really was brilliant first question who killed my parents joe chill got it next what's the joker's real name mm. like you want to talk about an obsessive you yeah. have the power of ultimate knowledge and you know everything happening in the present first two things who killed my parents who's the joker you obsessive nutcase but then he finds out later on in the story that there were actually three jokers and did anyone ever do anything with that or has the universe been ripped apart five times since then and that that's all you know <laughs> that, uh, that's not even a thing anymore i'm pretty well, sure that's the latter uh, I th- <laughs> I think the three jokers thing was sussed out a little bit, actually, dude. It's changed. I'm fairly certain since then. Um, but I I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what happened. Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> no answer. No answers. Surprise. Okay, Ronnie, your favorite part? Definitely Batman. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, he's the world's greatest detective anyway. He could find out all the, you know, anything he needs to, I mean, he's, he's taken on apocalypse and, you know, uh, he's given the apocalypse trouble. I wouldn't say he beat him, but he, he has definitely given him, you know, a world of hurt. This is a man with no powers. So he's, he's, he's friggin' Batman. And then he's like, well, I guess I could just sit in this chair and learn everything ever you know so it, it, it was definitely it was right along with the character of he he could go for you know power he could go for whatever but he'd rather have knowledge yeah and, well we there is a one there was a one shot where you know in the midst of the dark side war where they took batman apparently i, I don't know if this is a trade i'm looking at but it, justice league dark side war power of the gods which uh, it looks like it might have been chronicling. I think, coll- I think it's a collection of all the different one shots, uh, dark side, dark side one shot, dark side war one shots, which Batman, Superman, the Flash, okay. the Lantern, Shazam, and Lex Luthor. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, one of the big parts of this book is where members of the Justice League become and Lex Luthor and Lex Luthor. Well, apparently he was a member of the Justice League when this occurred. They had brought him and Captain oh, Cold. God. Yeah, dude. They brought him and Captain Cold as in as members of the Justice League. Now, this is not in the book. This is like prior to the book. But they brought the, them in to the Justice League as some kind of PR thing. And, of course, they don't trust them one way or the other. But that's why they're together at the beginning. Yeah. Each one of the members of the Justice League, well, not each one, but some of the members of the Justice League gain these powers. And I'm fairly certain these powers are similar to what the new gods had. Because the one, I recognize the Black Racer. And when the Black Racer and Flash kind of merged together, but that was a cool ass looking Flash, by the way. Yeah. Um, but when those two merge together, Flash becomes the god of death. Superman, the god of strength, which, by the way, I mean, it, how many times are we going to see Superman corrupted in some kind of way and turned, I wouldn't say evil, but my gosh, I can name like probably five times I've seen Superman turned into a, a bad guy of some sort or that, influenced some way. Go ahead. And that really did lack imagination. As Superman, strongest being in the universe. He's the god of strength. Well, no shit. He was the god of strength before that. <laughs> What, was, in, what made this what made him in any way better <laughs> yeah the only thing it did was like change his personality and of course that sets into motion one of the big things at the end where we find out that uh clark kent superman is dying mm. uh after after all uh, after they finally get separated, something happened to his cells. And Aquaman, by the way, did not see him throughout this whole series. He wasn't in this book at all, was he? No, he wasn't. I was going to say, no Aquaman. Batman with the Mobius chair. Uh, Shazam, the god of gods, which, pff, uh, okay. Well, I noticed they were calling him Shazam, by the way. Mm-hmm. No more Captain Marvel. No more Captain Marvel. 
And is that it? That am I missing one? For some reason, I feel like I'm missing one. <clears throat> Green Lantern, uh, the God of Light. He was got. He was turned into one. Or well, he had a one shot called that. I don't remember him being turned into anything. Not in this main series. There was the God of Knowledge, the God of Strength, the God of Death, the God of Gods. Luther was. Oh yeah. What was he? The, the God of Apocalypse. Or God some of shit. Apocalypse. Okay. And then, yeah, well, yeah, I don't remember Green Lantern being turned into anything. Well, he had a one shot, and I can't remember. The Flash is the God of Death. Yep. Uh, Superman is the God of Strength. Okay. Batman is the God of Knowledge. Uh, Shazam is the God of Gods. God of Gods. Lex Luthor is God of Apocalypse. Okay. And Green Lantern is the God of Light. <laughs> Did he go through any transformation? I don't recall. I can remember him just being a thorn in Batman's side. Tell him, get off the chair. Get off the chair. Hey, man, yeah, get off he the really chair. Was, he really was like a nagging wife in that episode. Hey, you, get off that chair. No! Who's the Joker? No! <laughs> 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 I'm going to stop crimes! <laughs> get off my back, Hal. <laughs> I mean, there's there's that one redeeming moment where he like takes his ring off it gets back it gives it to batman so he can get him off the chair maybe that's what it, i don't know but okay or did whatever. Have to do the power ring well the thing is, is that they would have you would have thought they would have just called her well, maybe you're right i don't know she turned into a green lantern at the end yes she did congratulations jessica cruz how Sorry. many green lanterns of earth are there al jordan john jones no the oh john stewart john stewart yeah, yeah that's right right sorry john hal jordan john jones stewart. no <laughs> Stewart. <laughs> John Stewart. Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner. Uh, Kyle Ripken. No. Rainer. Um, Kyle Ripken. Uh, Kyle yeah, Rainer. Rainer. <laughs> and now Jessica Cruz. That's fine. Now, and that one dude that was uh, had the mask and carried the pistol. I, I don't know that guy. Punisher? No. <laughs> um, gosh, what was he was um, Middle Eastern, I think. Osama bin Laden? Oh. Yeah, dude, I have no idea who you're talking about. Carried a pistol? Yeah. Um, this is a, this Simon, is Simon Baz. Okay. Yeah. He, I don't think he lasted long, but he was a member of the, the Green Lantern Corps created by Jeff Johns. Okay. So we got six Green Lanterns for Earth, sector whatever, 24, 24, or whatever, 24, 20, 52. All right. So, Mark, I mean, we've, we've talked about confusion of characters. Was there a character that you're just like, uh, okay, we could do without this person. Oh, wow. Well, there's 106 of them in here. So, uh, <laughs> uh, geez, where where to begin editing? <laughs> you kind of need Grail. Grail is, is really what sets a lot of things in motion. Yep. You probably don't need Big Barda. No, she played an important role in the end. Okay. I mean, if they were oh, trying... Sure. The Black Green Lantern wears a ski mask and carries a gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I don't think he's black. Racist. Well, I don't. I didn't create him. I'm not saying you're the one that's racist. I'm saying DC's racist. Oh, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head either. That really doesn't kind of fit the bill. But man, they were just uh, characters were I mean, like you said all over the place. We had the crime syndicate. We had the new gods. We had Mobius, Dark Side, Dark Side Baby. Uh, <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's what did it for me <laughs> dark side baby took you out of it huh oh little baby dark side that that whole arc okay so let me let's i guess give the lowdown here for our listeners and now you guys jump in because i'm trying to i'm going to try and do this off of memory but dark side dies and he dies at like i think it was like issue two or issue three the anti-monitor gets the best of him and what's neat about that is the anti-monitor is like fueled by the anti-life equation, which is something Darkseid has always been looking for. He's always been looking for the anti-life equation. Well, he found it and, and uh, the anti-monitor and the anti-monitor lays him out with it. So anyway, Darkseid dies. I mean, most of the plot by the crime syndicate is to have... <sighs> Man, I, I'm going to do my best to try and ex- explain this. But they find Superwoman, who – is that Lois Lane, Ronnie? Yeah. Okay, because they kept calling her Lois, and I'm like <clears> – she, Well, Lois she's an Lane? Amazonian in this, too, and – Okay, uh, I'm just going. Has Superman's power? I don't know. Well, that whole, that whole thing is confusing. The you know Ultraman, Superwoman. Yeah, I mean, so, super, yeah, Superwoman is confusing to me. Uh, the rest of them are just evil doppelgangers of the other. You know, they they kind of make sense. 
So, well, I noticed she called Alman Thomas. That isn't mm-hmm. Thomas Wayne, is it? Yeah. Uh, now, see, I'm asking questions I don't know the answer to. Let me just stick to trying to tell you the, the plot as I remember it, faintly remember it. But anyway, Superwoman is pregnant when we find her and their plot, their big gambit in this whole thing is that they're going to have a baby uh, and the baby is going to be, <laughs> I, I assume the baby's going to be dark side. Is that what, was that what their plan was? Because, or was it, did it become dark side just accidentally because they use this baby to absorb the powers of the new gods. And yeah, folks, just try and follow along with that. The- yeah, is it nature or nurture? Does a baby become dark side because of its parents, or is it born dark side? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Oh. So, so yeah, baby dark side at the very the very end of this tale lives. It, it absorbed all this power, and then it becomes a baby dark side. And does Grail end up raising baby dark side at the end of this? Is that what happens? Yeah, she's got him. And- okay. All right. That's I, I, so. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Baby Dark Side at the end of this book is we being are, raised by his own daughter. We, we are just absolutely into this storyline. I'm telling uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I guess whatever. <laughs> so okay, so Grail ends up raising Baby Dark Side. Yet another another propaganda piece for the single mother. This is liberal propaganda. This Dark Side War. It's all in there. I mean, let's go ahead and we'll talk about the end of this, the the ending of this story. We haven't even talked about the beginning yet. I can't. <laughs> it's like, dude, I there's so much that I, I, it's hard for me to pick out. Like, okay, what was all what right? Was, what was the so, one thing we've already talked about, about our favorite parts? Do you guys want? I mean, we could maybe list our second favorite part because there's so much kind of that happens in Grail here. comes to Earth, it, or well, I don't know if she comes to Earth, but she comes. She comes into this fight wanting to start a war with Darkseid. So she's pulling all of these these strings to start this war. She's you know with the she's got the anti monitor. She's got um, everything working in order to to go to war with Darkseid. Can I just Dylan, say what? that her that her entrance, by the way, is one of the craziest entrances of a, a female villain that I've ever seen, where she erupts from the mouth of the Flash. Yeah, what was that about? <laughs> don't know. I don't know. We can move on now. <laughs> but it, it's it, night. It's nightmare fuel. That's what it is. It yeah. is, dude. It really is. This okay. This story, the ladies and gentlemen that are listening to us right now, and say, "Oh my God, they're butchering this." I don't know if I can listen to it. Read it, and yeah. you'll understand. <laughs> um, there is so much going on. There are. There's a plot. There's like seventeen different subplots. There's. There are so many. You know, side flashes. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna focus on on um, what's her name, Grail, and and this, and and she's apparently and her the mom. yeah her mom. Um, so there's there's all this stuff going on and basically they just want the mon- anti monitor and dark side to fight so the so the anti monitor can kill dark side and both their powers are released and someone is going to take this power and try to rule everything so somehow all this power gets separated all of the phoenix force and the phoenix 5 uh in marvel and it, you know it goes to each of you know the existing justice league members flash superman Shazam, Lex Luthor, and whoever else I'm missing. So we've got all this craziness going on. We've got Lex Luthor and Superman on Apocalypse, and they're trying to fight their way out, and they realize that there's no sun, no sunlight getting to Superman, so it's becoming more vulnerable by the day or by the minute. And um, so he gets clocked in the head by um, one of the slaves on Apocalypse who, who, who start rioting whoever brings you know superman to whoever kills superman and lex luthor uh gains their freedom so they 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 go after him relentlessly so they clock him in the head with a club and he finds out he's bleeding well lex luthor do, he says well it's because you're solar you're a solar battery and you're getting no power they start getting overtaken by whatever what are the things from apocalypse called um parademons parademons they're they're getting overrun by parademons so lex luthor throws superman into um this uh, solar energy thing that's on apocalypse um which is not the kind of solar energy that he needs 
it's it, it turns him you know not so much evil as it does hardcore and then he becomes the god of strength, strength. um and then it, he takes to heart something that lex luther said lex luther he said uh but you know if i don't get any more you know if you don't get more power or more more sun you're going to become superman says human he says no you become vulnerable you'll never be human and meaning you're from Krypton, you're an alien, you're never going to be from Earth, you're never going to be human. So at that point, he beats the crap out of Lex Luthor for, you know, because he ticked him off of what he said and leaves him in an apocalypse. And he gains the power of apocalypse and becomes the god of apocalypse. So at that point, you're going, oh my God, that's horribly confusing. Yes, that's a subplot. <laughs> <laughs> That is a <laughs> subplot to this uh, massive. With, okay, the only thing I can I can relate this to is you know when you go to your garage or your attic and you get out your Christmas lights and they're the big giant ball. You know they're connected somehow, but you don't quite know, and you're trying to unravel them so you can just get a straight line of lights. That's exactly what this is because after about 15 minutes of that, you just wad them up and go buy another set. Yes. Because at this at this point, I wanted to wad this up and go buy just another story, <laughs> just any other story it could be. I wanted to pick up my Howard the Duck run and start reading it, but I didn't. I didn't read or uh, listeners. I did this for you. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something to say about simplicity when you get when you find a good story that's simple fun to read all right that that could be one of your favorite stories for a very long time yeah. then, you have, then you have something like this that's very complex brings in i believe that dc thinks that with events one of their biggest selling points is Everybody's got to be in it. It's confusion. <laughs> Everybody's got to be a part of it. It's and like, that's, that's where I think the downfall sometimes happens. It's they like gotta, I was sitting around one day in the office. Of, you know how we haven't used in a while? Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle. Let's make this big confusing storyline based around him. You know what? That's a brilliant idea. You're promoted. I guess really the saving grace for me on this event is that it it does mean something in the long term when it comes to the DCU. I mean, they set up a few things. The upcoming potential death of Superman, which I think he does disintegrate at some point. That's the new 52 Superman who is in love with Wonder Woman, not Lois Lane. Okay, and that's the one who in this in this story is told I'm that he. A, I'm getting a fucking nosebleed. <laughs> Right, that's right, the one yeah. in the story who's who's told that his his cells are degenerating or whatever and he will die Correct. so they set up that uh they set up uh well they kind of put an end to the crime syndicate you know your ultraman your wonder woman or superwoman uh oh man power uh, ring power ring yeah and so they kind of set that in motion to get them because they brought them in and they had Johnny to quick I, they had to sit there and get rid of them. What's funny is they get rid of Dark Side. Oh my goodness, Dark Side's dead. End of the book. Oh my goodness, Dark Side's alive. Ladies and gentlemen, there goes the buzzer. It's over. <laughs> Sorry, my dryer just went off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that pretty much sums up this whole book. It's like <laughs> we didn't we didn't really get very far, did we? Dark Side's still alive. Baby Dark Side. Woo. The whole new gods thing, they come in and then they leave. So really the two important issues or the two important things that come from this, it's the fact that Superman's possibly going to be dying and the, the new 52 Superman. And I, I'm going to say the epilogue, the very end. And Mark, I, I, ha I worry that I may have spoiled the book for you when I sent that, <laughs> that picture yesterday. Were you done with the series when I sent that picture? I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. I had this strange feeling when I said it, Mark was just agreeing with me. Like, yeah, I can see that. All right. So the epilogue occurs. And by the way, Batman is tossed from the Mobius chair. Owl man is now the possessor of the Mobius chair. And then the, and then the dam broke. <laughs> we find out he was in league with Metron at some and out and out come the gangsters, new Jack and Mustafa <laughs> chairs are being, na -na 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 -na. here comes the blue world order. <laughs> so at the, at the end of it, the epilogue, Al man and Metron are sitting on the moon and something, by the oh, way, every, oh, every Metron, yeah, is, yeah, I think it's Metron's hanging out there. That's yeah. where we kind of find out that they were colluding together to kind of have these events happen or whatever. Uh, but you know, 
all of a sudden you see Owlman, his eyes kind of get big and he says, oh, he's here. And then the next panel you see is just blood and dust. Owlman explodes. He does explode. He does explode. So right at the very end, we're left with the big question. Who had the power, the wherewithal, and is able to get the drop on Metron and vaporize, or excuse me, vep- well, I think Metron is killed as well. But yeah. the only thing you see is a, an empty... No, no, no. You see a big blue flash of light. Ah. And then you see uh, Owlman, the, the remnants of Owlman after he explode. That's right. And uh, Which is just blood on the chair. Is there, and it's an empty Mobius chair. So that's it. That's what you see. Now, I sent Mark the picture yesterday. I said, do you have any idea who could have done this? And yeah, Mark and we, agreed that it was, and we agreed that it was the one fucking guy from... Um, uh, the Watchman, Doctor Manhattan, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, it, the one. it is indeed the setup for the Watchman universe to finally become part of the DC mainstream universe. Uh, this, these issues had to. It said, you know, coming up next and Rebirth. So this was two years ago in May that they dropped Rebirth number one. So this must have wow. been shortly. Yeah, dude, it was forever ago. I mean, they've been playing with that for a long time now, and we're still finally just getting to Doomsday Clock, which is uh, uh, this this month. So, all right, Mark, what do you think of the ending? We, we got to the end of the story. It's We already agree that it's a cluster. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> did, did you feel like the ending tied things together well enough for you to go, oh, okay, thank goodness. I, I read Everything- it and I, and I got it and I gleaned what was happening basically that that this was the that this really was a, a, a battle between dark side and the anti-monitor and dark side dies and then he was brought back to life but i guess with the power that was inside the anti-monitor with the power of love <laughs> and it was in infu- and it was infused in baby dark side can we not say baby dark side well, anymore? <laughs> It's what's I, funny is do I basically have that right? What's that? Do I yeah. basically have that right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking of all these crazy things that happened in the end where I finally have my second favorite part, by the way. What's that? The cheesy horror film ending of of Gail holding or Grail holding the baby and be like, oh, it's yes. everything's gonna be okay. I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna do exactly what Dark Side didn't do to me. You're gonna be sheltered and loved and pampered, and then you turn around and he looks looks at the at, uh, looks at, at the reader and he's got these he's got dark side's face and then red eyes with you know like rah, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> like seriously dude what's funny is I, again i was thinking of some of the crazy crap that happens in this book wonder woman has the baby she starts yelling shazam backwards it starts <laughs> sucking in all this power and then all of a sudden Superwoman it becomes, has the baby now doesn't anyone rob a bank in the dc universe anymore and, right <laughs> all of a sudden, what happened to the wait, damn breaking wait i've got a <laughs> I've got to tell the rest of the story. All of a sudden, the baby becomes full size dark side. I mean, and it's sitting there. But it, was like, but it was like zombie dark side. And then he's he's laying out people left and right. He's got the omega beams or whatever he's got coming out of his eyes. And then all of a sudden, psh, he goes away. And then we got baby dark side again. And baby can dark I, side. Can I pitch something to Brian Michael? Brian Michael Bendis, if you're listening, please, as, as you as you take control over the DC universe, would you please write a 12 part story that will be captured in a trade paperback about how the humans revolt against all of the DC he, uh, heroes because they keep destroying the universe and that the world would be better off without them? I seriously want like on page one, like just some dude shoots Batman. And be like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> well, Knock it our, off. We'll take our chances with the Joker and the Penguin and the Riddler because they're fairly incompetent. You, however, are participate <laughs> in, in the destruction of the universe on more than one occasion. And then, you know, book, you know, page two, someone takes a gun. It's got kryptonite bullets when it shoots Superman in the back of the head. And this just goes on this way. You know, there, there's a mission set up by NASA. You know, that's a joint effort between the Americans and the Chinese to go to Oa and blow it the fuck up. No more Green Lanterns. <laughs> We're done. Okay. We're done there's, with a, you. there's a hey, pri- Batman. You see this? This is called a 45. It can take out the penguin, too. <laughs> the, the, there's a, you know, the, the, the Oklahoma chapter of No Man gets their AR 15s together and they all invade Themyscira. <laughs> <laughs> I see that going bad for the Oklahomans. 
<laughs> Why? The the Amazons just have swords. They're gonna show up with automatic weapons. And we've seen the damage they can do. Right, they, but I just see it still going bad for them. I, I I'm okay with them. The Amazons, they just want to be left alone. They don't really you don't see them a whole lot in these big storylines, um, unless somebody messes with them. They're kind of like the Hulk. He just leave him alone and he'll be fine. Let okay. him throw a rock every once in a while. He'll be, you know, just, he's okay. What if the Oklahoma chapter of No Man just shoots Wonder Woman? I don't think they really care at this point. <laughs> They're like, you know what? Take her. <laughs> Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> okay. So you hear Brian Michael Bendis? We, we want average, Amer- we want average people of whatever Earth this is that they are up to this time, Earth 512, to just murder the DC universe and everyone in it. And then, like, John from Texas can be like Lasso Man. <laughs> and you know it's just you know uh, punisher style people uh, you know they take the place of your of your heroes and they're like listen we're going to take care of everything we're all right seriously i mean you've got what wonder woman's most fierce foe is a woman dressed up like a cheetah <laughs> shoot her <laughs> Ronnie, what's your last word here on Dark Side War? Oh, my gosh. My last (laughs) word on it. (laughs) I thought it was going to be a lot better than what it was, mainly because, you know, it's Jeff Johns. But it it was like, it reminded me of when my dog throws up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm like, how did that get in there? And why is it? Why is it in there? Uh, That's a big mess. Now I have to clean that up. Um, I wish very, this, nev- this is a very apt description, by the way. Because I wish this never happened. All this, all this comes out, <laughs> and then the end result is just a stain. <laughs> it's a stain on the carpet. That's it. And, and, and I want to look at. I want to look at DC and say you have stained my carpet. Oh wow! <laughs> all right, Mark Radlich, last word. You know, you guys, like, again, a lot of this stuff, I... <laughs> I'm taking a, a running tally of how many times Mark says, you, <laughs> you know. know, you know, <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying what we just read was terrible. I was entertained by it, but I mean, <laughs> I was too confused to be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing. I've, I, I have participated in mosh pits. And I've watched mosh pits, and those are entertaining too. It's just people colliding into each other and falling down and getting punched in the face, and there's music playing, and it's dark, and it's all very interesting and fun to watch in all of its chaos. <laughs> you aptly described this book. Yeah. <laughs> this book is a mosh pit full of dog vomit. <laughs> you know. You know. I, I want to give my last word here on, on Dark Side War. I, I will say that I did enjoy at least trying to stay (laughs) you know trying to stay on top of what was going on they didn't make it so incredibly hard like i'm glad mr miracle was thrown in there and i knew you know i knew a bit of his background uh the anti-monitor was in there and they tied him you know they tied him to dark side in some way but you know hey we got dark side's daughter and then the ending of this book just really went way out there I mean, and a lot of it was fairly inconsequential. Was it a good story? Man, no, I I really don't think (laughs) I really can't say that it was the greatest. Uh, I I finished it and there was a lot of the bad guy. It was terrible. (laughs) It was a little bit long winded as well. I don't know if you guys got that feeling, but there were times where I felt I needed the Golden Age Dave, that comic book, where I was just okay. looking at the pictures and following what was going on that way. Okay. Um, it it doesn't get the year's award for wordiest book. That's still Guardian Devil. <laughs> I will get thank you, Kevin Smith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a will you please just shut up? Yes, yes. Feeble attempt. I have one last thing to say. Oh, please, sir. Or, well, for a long time. I cried foul on New 52. Uh-huh. Because if they were going to end it like this, you know, because I even though I wanted the New 52 to end, I was I was so fed up with DC I didn't read this. And I didn't really I haven't gotten into rebirth. This was not a good start to something new, in my opinion, or an end to something, it's not a good end to something bad either. Because with what they did and how they how they discover, you know, how they, you know. Uh, made excuses, I guess, for New 52 just kind of infuriates me more. 
Because at the end of this, if you'd have to be, if you've read any DC, if you've read comic books, if you're a comic book fan, you'd have to be, uh, you know, headless to not realize that it's Dr. Manhattan coming back to, you know, set things straight or whatever. And then I guess the the story was, if I'm if I'm guessing correctly, that the New Fifty Two was just a creation of Doctor Manhattan, um, and then he's erasing it. Or That's right. even if it's not a creation of Doctor Manhattan's, he's still getting rid of it. I forgot about that little tie-in. Yeah, yeah. So um, because at the end of Rebirth number one, Batman's digging through the cave and he finds the he finds the comedian's pen stained with blood. Yeah, and. Uh, so it, that that uh, you know automatically says, oh my gosh, you know it it is the Watchman, you know it is or it is Watchman, it is Doctor Manhattan. I find that a lot of people, I can't remember the name of, of the show, but it was a soap opera, and it had built up, built up, built up to where you know a lot of these shows that go a long time kind of jump the shark, and people are like, okay, I'm still gonna go, I'm still bought, it, bought into this, even though I don't really like it. And then at the end of this certain, the soap opera, it showed that the entire show was just the imagination of a young child staring into a snow globe. Isn't that St. Elsewhere? St. Elsewhere. And and everybody, that was the last show, that the entire run of the show was just the imagination of this child staring into a snow globe. And that's kind of how I feel like DC did with the New 52 and everything leading up to the New 52, including Dark Side War. All of this happened but it was just the imagination of a childlike being almost you know being dr manhattan who sees everything black and white yes no right and wrong you know the you know he's just he's it is what it is because he's dr manhattan it's like he took his little snow globe and shook it or his etcher sketch and shook it and reset everything so it was kind of a, of a cheap cop out in my opinion so this was not in my in my opinion this is solely my opinion this was not a good ending to that this did not give me any what's the word i'm looking for it didn't give me any closure to what they were doing with the new 52 all it did was make me go okay I didn't enjoy this whole run, and the end of it just confused the heck out of me. What did I just read? Holy crap, it was all part of Dr. Manhattan's imagination. He he shook his snow globe and said, okay, we're going to start over again. And now I just don't want to give you any of my money anymore, DC. But now that Brian Michael Bennis is a part of it, I'll probably blindly throw my dollars at it and just say, I want to read Brian Michael Bendis. (laughs) <laughs> but um, it, it, it just it, it's one of those things that left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, this show or this show, this 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 whole um, now, am I sorry that I bought it at the at the convention? No, no, not at all, because I got a lot of cool variant covers from this this too. Um, several variant covers that they had through this. One of them being the Looney Tunes characters as the Justice League, uh, which did not match the storyline at all. They're like, "Oh, hey, what can we do for a variant cover?" I just throw Bugs Bunny on there. Go, okay, that sounds good. Um, good old but, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the whole thing was just kind of like, "Oh gosh, if this is if this is." Any inclination, inclination of what's to come, I, I just don't want to be a part of it. I just don't want to be a part of it. That's what I was left with. We'll leave it on that, Ronnie Adams. Wow. Ahead, let me, I want to add one thing to that. I think as we go forth into next year and I look at the list that I sent you and you know we start talking about things to do, I definitely want to stick to the more self-contained, smaller stories. Because what I'm realizing is that I the these large bigger than life you know cosmic you know time cross time spanning ridiculous stories and and look they did it with secret wars they did it with this they they've just we we've covered a couple of these where they just want to shove everything into it and it's like I go back to I just want to see a bad guy rob a bank so I mean I, we've got some fun stuff set up for next year and, and we'll see how all that so goes but good I, luck with Infinity War coming up. <laughs> Yeah, but even that the the only um, the only the thing that they have synergized with that is the Infinity Book. Yeah, which was pretty pretty self contained. Right. This is why I will have and always will love smaller stories and street level characters because I mean you 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 look at at the the whole what was a Secret War thing that we had that that uh, Jesse and I covered, which was just insanity at points. 
Um, <laughs> Thorcore. Thorcore. There was a, a giant thing who who was a wall, but he came out of the earth. Johnny and, Storm's yeah. the sun. Johnny oh, Storm's God. The sun. <laughs> uh, Doctor Doom is God. What I have is a note bleed right again. <laughs> you know, it's just a what is happening right now. Um, but through all that, you've got the Punisher. Good old Frank Castle. What does he do? He just keeps to his mission. He goes in, he blows up some bad guys. He says, all right, I'm ready to die now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Frank, for keeping it simple. Indeed. Indeed. All right, let's get into plugs, boys, and get the heck out of here. Uh, Mark Radulich, I'll start with you, sir. The schedule. I feel like you're you're sad now between me and <laughs> me. Yeah, and... I'm sorry. No, uh, t- I am not this sad is a, anyway. I, I was perfectly happy covering this book. I didn't even, I'm not even the one that suggested it. You assholes come on here and just <laughs> shit all over everything. You dum dums. It was, listen, it deserves a lot of the flack that we are giving it just because it just seems so, it seems so huge, so epic in scale and to drop ourselves into it, you know, and let me go ahead and I'll just say what they what they miss out on these big events is somebody that just picks up the event itself and has no idea what's going on before or after. I I imagine if you didn't know who the crime syndicate was, there might be a time where you're like, who are these jamokes? I don't know what this guy, I don't know what this guy's doing. What, what, why, why does this guy look like Superman, but have a U on his chest? Why is he eating kryptonite? (laughs) Why does he look like my grandpa? I mean, he's he's all skinny and scrawny. And I mean, it was just, you know, there were times where a person. Why is he eating kryptonite? A person who had no idea, who who had no idea about the universe could pick up a book and enjoy it. This is not that book. You do not want to give this to somebody and say, here you go. Have fun with this. You've <laughs> hey, never read DC before. Great. I've got a book for you. Here's hey, dark side I, war. Hey, I was at that movie justice league. Would, would you recommend a justice league coming to me? Sure. Dark side war. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you never, they never read DC again. They come back to you. <laughs> Why do you hate me? <laughs> like, well, I'm what, did I, what did I ever do to you? Why is the baby gray and evil looking? I don't understand <laughs> why. How is, did she give birth and then he grew and then he now he's a baby again? Why, why are they calling the mean lady with the laser eyes Lois? <laughs> That's supposed to be Superman. So, oh my gosh! Why is Lana Lang from Superman Three with Richard Pryor yelling "Hail Darkseid"? Who's Darkseid? <laughs> Why is he eating kryptonite? For God's sake! <laughs> there are three jokers. Three jokers. There three are three jokers. jokers. I don't understand. <laughs> You can't give this to somebody and say, here, start here. There's no way. And granted, it's the end of a series. Two issues after this, like I said, 52 was the final issue of Justice League, at least this run, as far as I can tell. Uh, I'm fairly certain because they didn't have any more on the website that I was looking at anyway. And I, I, I imagine they went on to do something different because Rebirth hit. But yeah, you can't tell somebody to start here. That's, that's for dang sure. And it, it's surprising to me that DC did all of that but regardless <laughs> maybe you should start i mean if there is any argument for why you should start with a number one issue this would probably be it you don't want to jump into <laughs> issue 40 and think you're going to be okay you might as well start with issue one and hope I, for the best i don't know jesse i don't even think starting at issue one would have made much of a difference <laughs> no i want to write for dc because it's going to be like okay so here's my pitch the universe is collapsing because that's because it's always collapsed. Brilliant. Here's a million dollars. You've already got their ear. They're ready for the next. Okay. The universe is die? collapsing. We need to know who, who's going to die. Okay. So in, in this iteration, half of the Green Lantern's corpse are going to die of syphilis. And the and, and, dark- and syphilis is just not a disease. It's actually a yellow ring power. But go ahead. Yeah, it's character. It, uh, when I say they're going to die by syphilis, it's, it's actually a character. <laughs> <laughs> We've decided to name one of the most <laughs> iconic villains in DC history after an STD. Okay. Oh my gosh! It's, <laughs> the, the syphilis is coming for for the Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's a tagline at the end of the Green number three. I can't breathe. I can't Syphilis. breathe. Syphilis is coming. Syphilis will end oh, the yeah. DC universe. 
I'm crying. No one's safe. Uh, no one's safe no from one's syphilis. Safe from syphilis. <laughs> Can Superman beat syphilis? <laughs> you know what? That's the thing. Nobody does. Everyone gets syphilis. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. Uh, and oh at the my end, gosh. And at the end, the only one left standing is Snagglepuss, who's oh, gay no. and living in the village and still Dude, writing plays. Stop it. That didn't. That's, that hasn't happened yet, and I don't want it to ever happen. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to talk about that on this show. Oh, <laughs> when that, is the Snagglepuss Why do you love out? awful things? <laughs> All right. It's just as plugs. Yes, let's do plugs. <laughs> My gosh. Really? <laughs> we haven't done those yet? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm too busy pitching terrible DC storylines. Uh, while you're plugging, I'm making sure to hashtag syphilis is coming on, on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Syphil- just, just, just next to, on the next source material, syphilis destroys the reaver. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Thanks wow. Wow. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to spell syphilis. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Don't, don't Throw- click on the Google. No, don't. Okay. <laughs> You'll see pictures. C Y P H Q F. That signal. Stage three affects <laughs> internal <laughs> organs. <That signal. laughs> so right here on the Rattle Engine Broadcasting Network this week, if you're listening to this live, and really, why? Why syphilis aren't you? Is coming for you. <laughs> Jesse and I have, will have more silliness tomorrow on TV Party Tonight as we look at the third season of Black Mirror. We finally finished that up for the year. On the Metal Hammer of Doom is another villain coming after the DC Universe called Ackercock. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to save the clap? <laughs> Ackercock, ladies and gentlemen. Renaissance and Extremis. Um, We'll be talking about that on the Metal Hammer of Doom Wednesday at nine. Uh, if you're listening to this live on the, if you're listening to this on the Rattle and Broadcasting Network uh, on the twentieth of November during your you know, Thanksgiving break, if you're a school teacher or a child, we've got uh, ju- the, our review on Daniel Hollywood of Justice League. Uh, we've got our Thanksgiving show on the Metal Hammer of Doom. We're going to look at Poison. Look what the cat dragged in. And then uh, our since th- Thanksgiving is Thursday, on Black Friday, aptly named, we're going to look at uh, On Trial, Batman very Superman. So that's what we got going on here on the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network. All right. Ronnie Adams, plug, sir. Do it. <laughs> oh, I have a show called The Screaming Boy Podcast. We are back. Uh, we released two episodes that we did not get to, pre- to previously release. Uh, it was <laughs> March will get kicked out of this. I released, um, bef- bef- be- it happened before my computer went down, so I didn't get to release it on iTunes. It was from Here in My Car Week. <laughs> on the Red Let Your Broadcast Network. Jesse and I took a look at iconic uh, movie cars. Uh, we also did the uh, Josh Calandrus, Adam, and I took a look at, uh, in another episode, uh, the uh, newest season of Mystery Science Theater 3000, uh, the one with um, Joel and uh, Kinga, and, you know, not, not the old one, but the newest one. So we released those two. Then we released our newest episode uh, where we took a look at and completely spoiled for adam runyon stranger things 2 uh which is still one of my favorite shows ever so if you ever do a tv party tonight on stranger things uh count me in mark radulich so we we got that we got some uh we got a new episode coming out um at the end of this or well we're going to record a new episode at the end of this week uh and we release that soon probably the next day and uh so we're going to be looking at a few things uh there uh we're going to do a comic convention recap uh, so where I went to three comic conventions in two months and uh, and it kind of blew my mind because I was in a position up until recently where I could go to zero comic book conventions. So I actually got to take part in three this year uh, all around, you know, where I live. And it was the, it was a lot of fun. It was very eye opening to what actually happens at these cons. Uh, other than I mean, I, I shouldn't say I've not been to any. I went to uh, uh, River City Comic Convention, Comic Con. You talking about up here? Yeah. 
River City Comic Con. Yeah, River City Comic Con, which was always it was which was always a blast. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the the conventions I went to. Uh, you can check us out on any kind of social media. Which is uh, if you go on Facebook, just look up Screaming Boy Podcast. Uh, Twitter is at Screaming Boy PR. Uh, Instagram is Screaming Boy Podcast. We got lots of pictures from these uh, said conventions on there of cosplay and you know artist alley and stuff like that uh which was a lot of fun and uh that's pretty much it for right now um i do have one word of warning for you if you're going to uh read anything dc syphilis is coming (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i hope it trends um all right if it doesn't there is no justice in the world (laughs) no nope 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 (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, go give that Rattlich and Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. Previous episode, you can check out where me, Ronnie Adams, Benjamin J. Cologne, and Josh Calandros came together to discuss the breaking news of Brian Michael Bendis going to D.C. Uh, that was a fun discussion. It's about yeah, it an hour and a half long, folks. You, you, trust me, you'll, you'll enjoy listening to it, so check it out. Uh, you can follow me at Stiznarkey on Twitter, the show's Twitter, at SourceMatCast. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. Uh, for, uh, no, you know how, you know what the sign out's going to be for Mark Radlich, for Ronnie Adams. I'm Jesse Starcher. Syphilis is coming. <laughs> Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>recording this whole time i just hit start i just hit start don't okay. worry about that <laughs> or just like erase it erase it erase it all no i'm just like anyone listening to this is gonna be su- su- fucking suicidal it's like it's right. there's nothing no to fun. oh god why did i waste all that time in college oh my all god right. uh, just to recap college is a joke yeah <laughs> there you go that was the first half hour of this podcast that we did not record. But I, I can sum up this entire 30 minutes. As my grandfather told me on the day I graduated college, I should have been an accountant. <laughs> college is a joke. Nobody loves you. Go home. <laughs> the American dream is dead, as is rock and roll. It's probably right for this book. is Mr. Miracle, who uh, actually was the name of my gym teacher. But and, and when I was in... <laughs> That's in grade school. Huh. But just throwing that out there. Huh. <laughs> uh, he was not Scott Free. His name was Mr. Miracle. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Mr. Miracle. And that was uh, his legit, like, you know, Christian name, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> he was Mr. Miracle. Huh. Um, and he once got caught uh, naked when he was drunk. And somehow he continued I knew to be. It was, it was Mr. Miracle <laughs> naked. <laughs> Somehow he continued to be the gym teacher. Uh, uh, what? Wow. Man, no, dude. Well, that was a different time back then, buddy. Uh, 20 years ago, you could get naked and still have a, uh, a career at the school. So, anyway. Oh, uh, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah. God is God. Dun, 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 dun. God is God. Don't know that song. Lex Luthor is God of Apocalypse. Okay. Probably about some band named Goat Humper or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I got it, basically. I think the whole point of this was that the Mobius, who was the anti-monitor, didn't want to be the anti-monitor anymore. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't I don't understand what else happened. <laughs> Everyone knows Wingstop brings the flavor. Lemon pepper, OG hop, mango habanero, just to name a few. It's kind of our thing. That's why we created the Bringing It Boneless Bundle. 25 boneless wings, three flavors, and three dips. All for just $16.99. So next time your crew gets the craving, everyone can have their favorites. Hop on wingstop.com and order yours today. Prices and participation may vary. See local restaurant for details. <sighs> Can't stop. Wingstop. Everyone knows Wingstop brings the flavor. Lemon pepper, OG hop, mango habanero, just to name a few. It's kind of our thing. That's why we created the Bringing It Boneless Bundle. 
25 boneless wings, three flavors, and three dips. All for just $16.99. So next time your crew gets the craving, everyone can have their favorites. Hop on Wingstop.com and order yours today. Prices and participation may vary. See local restaurant for details. <sighs> Can't stop. Wingstop.